This Fleet Equipment unscripted interview is presented by Hendrickson, a leading manufacturer of heavy-duty suspension systems and components to the global commercial transportation industry. Visit hendrickson-intl.com to learn more. Hi everyone, I'm Jason Morgan, Content Director for Fleet Equipment, and welcome to Fleet Equipment Unscripted. Today we're talking with Mark Williamson, Manager, Product Marketing and Tech Services, Truck Commercial Vehicle Systems with Hendrickson. Mark, thanks for taking the time. Great to see you. Thanks, Jason. I appreciate the time as well. Thanks for having me. Yeah, for sure. We're talking about something really interesting here uh, that I want to dig into. We're talking lift axles, six by two configurations, how that all works and in terms of fuel efficiency, right? And I think this is a narrative that's been growing in the industry. It kind of ebbs and flows every so often, uh, but a lot of new technology and not a lot of new efficiency uh, options here. So let's just set some groundwork here. Lift axles. Uh, clearly, uh, one of the benefits uh, is reduced tire wear. When you're lifting the axle up, you're not running those tires, which is an obvious benefit. But what do you see as the potential fuel efficiency benefits of lift axles? Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of, of key features and benefits of the technology that Optimax provides. So the primary draw to Optimax is the operational savings that can provide a fleet. So the largest draw is is a weight savings. So it offers Optimax offers up to a 400 pound weight savings versus a traditional six by four. So that's pretty tremendous for for those fleets that uh, value weight, and and we encourage any any of those fleets that do value weight to consider specking Optimax. And and you alluded to it in your in your initial question there is is the fuel savings that I can provide with this suspension. It is Optimax that operates in the forward liftable tandem position. Okay. So with that, uh, you are eliminating uh, one driven axle, and right. so you're having a single driven axle because it is a six by two configuration. And from the independent testing that we've done here at Hendricks, and uh, just having a six by two, and it's pretty well known, you get up to a three and change fuel economy improvement, right? So that's pretty significant, right? And then with the, the tractor is lightly enough loaded where it, it allows for the opportunity for the Optimax axle to lift, um, it does provide additional fuel economy improvement of about two and two percent, two percent plus. So compared to a, a six by four and a lightly loaded you know, op tractor equipment Optimax, you have about 5% fuel economy improvement, up to 5% fuel economy. Well, that's pretty tremendous, especially when um, the fuel is so expensive. Again, yeah. like when, when Russia invaded Ukraine, fuel got very expensive. It was five dollars a gallon, right? That was that for for diesel fuel. That's 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 no joke. That's a lot of a lot of cost for, right. for a fleet. And again, after he states, it's the the number one uh, or number two thing that fleets are worried about is fuel cost, right? Right. Um, so another thing that Optimax can provide is the opportunity for toll savings. So if a fleet were running empty or lightly loaded up to lift the axle in one direction, they can provide uh, toll savings. So I ran an example case of um, a tractor leaving Indiana and driving through Illinois, which is a very toll heavy state, along with the many other states in the country for that matter, but Illinois in particular is, right? Driving through uh, Illinois to Wisconsin full and then driving back empty. So running that, that trip one way full, um, I came up with the tolls about $42.30 just that one way. Driving back, if they were to be equipped with a, a tractor or it does not a lift, um, like Optimax does, uh, they would pay, be paying the same $42.30 back. Right. Um, if they were equipped with Optimax, they would be paying $22.95 on the way back. So right. that itself would save, if that was their daily operation, that's right. $20 daily, right? Times right. five days a week, that's $100 per week, times a year, 50, 50, days, 50 weeks in a year, it's $5,000 a year. That's that's tremendous operational savings from a toll perspective. Right. Um, and one of the big things, and this technology has been out there for, for, for quite some time, the fleets that I found that are most, you know, um, interest in this and I found this most most important are those in particularly another tool heavy state, New York, New Jersey, right? Those bridges are very expensive. Right. And uh, yeah, it's 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 a very pricey part of operating a fleet. Um, so the the key way to do that is to uh, if you were to have a, tr a vehicle equipped with, with Optimax is to spec your tractor with the minimum number of axles on the ground. So if you had a, a you know, typically like an Optimax, it's a Cascadia. That's what's uh, available exclusively on at this point in time. Mm -hmm. um, it is uh, um, it is it is typically traditionally a six by four, six by two. So even if the six by two dead tag, you're registering it with six axles on the ground or three axles on the ground. I'm sorry, right? So with Optimax, you'd register it with only two axles on the ground. So more or less like a medium duty truck, right? Because again, the way those automatic uh, tolling booths work is they can only add axles, not subtract axles. Oh, I see. Okay. So it's a it's a key thing, and 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 fleets we've gotten complaints from fleets that have run 
uh, on uh, you know, lift access on the vocational side, even our UBL on the trailer side, saying that, hey, well, I didn't see the operational savings. Like, again, the key thing is to do it with a minimum number of access. And, and I would highly encourage any fleet that is, is looking at this technology, looking to take advantage of toll savings, definitely talk to their tolling authority to make sure that they're getting all the bang for their bucks. I know I've talked myself to about 12 of the 27, I guess, we have in the United States, because right. as you know, they're very sub-segmented. Um, but uh, from all the ones that I've spoken with, that is the way to achieve those operational savings. And we're, we're, we've been running it and we have not really received very minimal feedback that it has not worked, I'll put it that way. Right, so, right. Um, yeah, I mean, that, and it's really interesting there because from the, I imagine from the fleet perspective, it's, it's almost counterintuitive because, you know, it's, it's kind of the, the opposite. You, you think less time about the axle up and the savings there that, yeah, you just, we're taking it away when we don't need it, right? Whereas they're adding it on yeah. when we do need it. That's kind of interesting. And it's one of the, yeah, that's yeah, one of those it, like it, hidden costs uh, savings there too, because yeah. I didn't even think about it. It's, it's huge. I, I, and, and again, Five thousand dollars a year—that's real money in the fleet's pocket. When when the trucking is a game of, of pennies, right? Let's let's not that's that's the reality. Like yep. your 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 fleet made or broken on on pennies of operational savings, and that's a that's a pretty big one, especially in toll heavy areas to consider. Yeah, that's wild. Okay, look, I got to back up because uh, I hear you on all the six by two. We get the fuel savings. The toll savings is super interesting. Uh, you know, it hits tires. To your point. It's fuel and tires that are going back and forth all the time on costs, yep. right? So it's hitting both those buckets. We get the fun uh, toll savings, but <laughs> the, the question that I'm sure you always get asked, how do I know it's going to have enough traction to get the load moving? What, you know, it's a stigma of six by twos, I think. And, and I think rightfully so in some degree when they're not spec'd correctly, but there's a lot of technology on, on that side. So how are you pulling off that, that traction and that, that torque in a six by two configuration when you need it? Yeah. That's a, that's a that's a fair fair question, and it's the biggest um, biggest complaint definitely with people that have experience with six by twos. We saw when you know fuel got very expensive, a lot of people spec like 2014 timeframe, a lot of six by twos were were being sold, and all those in the dead tag uh, position. Well, a lot of fleets went to those, and drivers did not like them whatsoever. <laughs> they were again the traction deficit was the biggest complaint um, that 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 was that was brought up. And, and the, the, the six by two uh, dead tag configuration, exactly that, right? It's a dead tag. So the driven axle is in the forward tandem position. So in front of the fifth wheel. With Optimax, the, um, the driven axle is behind the fifth wheel. Right. So, one, what, so it's a little bit of a different configuration, which does help out. Yeah. So with that, um, it's not just that configuration, but it's one thing that helps it. Along with that, you have automatic traction control and ABS that help to work in, in conjunction without those, those items we would not have a technology like Optimax. Um, so one thing that those th those do is is automatic traction control. It does detect wheel slip, right? And when it does detect wheel slip, what happens is we, we have the ability with Optimax to uh, offer load bias. So if you do are in a wheel slip configuration, and I will say it's not instantaneous. It does take a little bit of a time to react and fully get the bias um, to to react. But it is um, it does put up to the the rated axle capacity um, that load in this in that lift, in the driven axle. So it can shift. Let's say you're fully loaded at 17 17, right? 12, 12 17 17 split, right? It can go to a 12 you know 14. 20 split so to speak right so and, and again it, it will react and it will, will help you out but abs and automatic traction are key enablers that allow for that to happen um, another key thing to, to note from a traction deficit um situation riding bobtail um is is very scary like if, especially if you hit um any type of, of slippery conditions i mean that's that's the biggest complaint that people do have well when you have a technology like optimax that when it is lightly loaded enough to lift, so again, a bobtail situation, that unsprung mass from, from the lifted axle, it only helps to add additional weight or load onto that driven axle. So you, so when you're running bobtail or lightly enough loaded where it does um, have the opportunity to lift, you will actually see more or less kind of increased traction from that, um, that six compared to a six by four because you do have actually some load on that driven axle. And that can really help out a lot. I see. I see. Yeah. And, and again, it comes down, uh, I think you alluded to here, to the kind of specking decisions and the spec for your application. I and mean, you mentioned a couple applications that these go into. I think of diminishing loads as well, of tanker kind of yep. applications that these would often go into. Um, one of the things yep. that I know that, that Optimax offers too that, that stuck out to me was a the ability to spec a 13. 13,300 pound steer axle capacity, which is above the traditional 12,000, 12,500 
uh, capacity that we're used yep. to. Can, can you tell me about that? And that seems like a mindset shift that, that people would have to understand. Why am I doing it? Is it safe to do it? What are the benefits of doing that? Like, what is that all about? Yeah, so that is a great question, and and again, we do we do we do get that uh, question from fleets a lot. Um, but the thir thirteen two uh, case tier axles are not that uncommon within the industry. We find in particular applications such as bulk haul, um, especially the higher CP applications, those thirteen three uh, thirteen K and above steer axles, the thirteen two thirteen three, depending on the OE, right? Um, the, they're not uncommon uh, to be spec'd. Um, but one one thing we try to do with 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 Optimax, and it can be actually be spec'd with a twelve and a half K steer axle, but we do encourage Leads to be spec to spec it with a 133 uh, steer axle for more opportunity for the Optimax to be in that lifted condition for those previously mentioned operational savings. Um, so fleets that are looking to um, in invest in Optimax, right? Usually they're pretty weight sensitive and they're 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 dialed in. They have their fleet their their specs exactly dialed into what they are. Well, Optimax does provide a little bit of an operational, a little bit of a paradigm shift. In fact, right? We talk about 400 pound weight savings. Right. Um, and and so you're offsetting some potential increase in weight with the higher capacity steer axle with that that weight savings. But what it does, an additional time and lift, it, it, it deprives all those those savings. But key things to look at: steer axle capacity. We actually, because again, the additional fuel economy. Look at your fuel tanks. Do you really need like let's say dual 80s? Can you get away with a single 120 or 140? Right? Because right. again, having a larger single tank can be a weight. To, provided it works for your application. I'm not saying right. don't work for your application, but right. just you know you're changing this there may be some other things to change looking at your slider length right i mean i know a lot of fleets do spec it's say 18 inch or 24 inch sliders for resale well i mean again can you do fixed can you do maybe a 12 inch slide right and just looking at where are you actually using that 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 fifth wheel position in, in your normal operation so it's more times than not there's a lot of fleets you talk to and those things really don't move once they're set to their position they're kind of kind of there but some of the dialed in they, they know they're when I'm full, I'm going here. When I'm yeah. when I'm empty, I'm moving it over here for better ride and everything like that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there, there's there's a lot of things to consider. Not only just the steer axle, but you know, there's we we like to encourage fleets to look at you know, also frame rail packages because again, there, that's a pretty big saving. So you got a whole length of, of a of a of a tractor. You you got seven millimeter, eight millimeter, nine millimeter frame rails that are that are available in, in these different configurations, and you have doublers even on some some different configurations as well. Again, all depends on the on the exact that the exact tool for the job, right? So right, right. Well, and you know, going back to something you said earlier in the 2014 and 2015 timeframe, where there were a lot of six by two con uh, configurations uh, being spec. You know, I mean, the importance of reconsidering your specking assumptions here, right? Like that was uh, far more years ago than I want to imagine now, right? That was eight years yeah. ago, seven years ago, and so technology evolves. These options evolve. Not just saying, okay, well, this is the spec and it, it's set in stone. Maybe there are, and to, to your point though, it's so specific. Maybe there is some wiggle room here. Maybe there is some wiggle room on the on the fuel tank size. I've heard that come up a couple times recently too. Of yeah, maybe I can get away with one fuel tank. Maybe I don't need both of them here. Yeah. Uh, I think the the fifth wheel uh, position is an interesting one too. And, and just things that, like you say, you set and you forget, and then next thing you know, maybe you could earn a little bit more money there. Yeah, no, agreed. It's just, it's, 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 it's interesting. And as you, as you get different fleets and work with them, you'll find different ones that are willing, especially if there's a new, like, um, new manager comes in to they look at, look at their specs and challenge them. Right. And just, right. Hey, does this make sense for our fleet and our operations? Right. So it's, it can be a good conversation to have an interesting conversation to have, of course. Right. Right. For sure. Well, I, I definitely had an interesting conversation. <laughs> I appreciate you taking the time uh, to catch me up to speed on what's going on uh, in this, in this specking world. Uh, I'm sure I'll talk to you again very soon as, as more of this rolls out. I appreciate it. Thanks again, Jason. Appreciate the time.